At number 54 on the iconic 100 list is the 1914 Cracker Jack Joe Jackson. And here to talk with us today about this card is Cage from the Luca Tiger Bronze podcast. What do you think? Uh, card num or number 54 on the list. I know there's some vintage baseball guys that are going to be upset to see this card this low. So I think it's right. And, you know, what's amazing about it is I, I, I'm I going to have to say low, high, some at some point in time. But I think this is right. And I don't know where I put it. I probably you, put it a little bit higher. You put it, you put it at 37, to be 37. fair. And, so I yeah. put it a little higher. Um, I will tell you what kind of cuts this is. Joe Jackson is iconic, right? He is a, one of the most iconic names in baseball. But, but he's iconic for being part of the Black Sox scandal. He's iconic for playing for the Chicago White Sox, where the World Series was was thrown, and you know he was part of the team, part of the trial, part of the you know part of the conspiracy, and then was ultimately banned from playing baseball again. Um, you know he was one of, if not the best players in the on that team and in the league at the time. So he's sort of become you know synonymous with that, even though I don't think he really had much of a part in it. Um, you know. It, and uh, so, so Joe Jackson himself is, is an iconic, um, you know, individual. That said, 1914, so here's, here's where I can understand why people won't put this, you know, as high as I did. He was playing for the Cleveland, uh, the Cleveland team. Um, and there's also a, uh, a prior card of his before this 1914, where he's also playing for Cleveland. I think it was in 1908. It's a caramel card. Um, so some people would prefer that card to this Cracker Jack card. I happen to love this card for a bunch of reasons. I've seen, you know, the, the, you know, the, the sports collectors convention do uh, cards that never were, you know, and give them out to people, you know, in slabs and they use this card. I think they made a Babe Ruth of it, you know, mm -hmm. with the Red Sox. Cause he was, you know, he was playing there, you know, he, he could have been on there like a pre-rookie kind of deal because the, the card itself is really cool. Right. It's this, it's this red colored card says Cracker Jack on it. Really awesome card. Um, you know, it's, it's, I would definitely prefer this one than any other, you know, Joe Jackson card out there. And there's plenty of like, it's an old mill. There's more expensive cards. But this particular card is cool because you want to talk about iconic. It's baseball. It's Joe Jackson. It's a story. But you go to a baseball game as a kid, you know, hot dog, wow. Cracker Jacks. It's in the song. It's like, buy me some peanuts and crackers. They didn't say, buy me some peanuts and Gaudi. They didn't say, buy me some peanuts and, and tops. They don't say, buy me some peanuts and American caramel. They said, buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. It's a Cracker Jack card. And these came in this particular year, the 1914, not the 15, all right, 1914. There's a big, dis there's a big distinction. In yes. 14, they actually came in the packages, right? So much more condition sensitive. In yes. 15... They actually were produced in complete set form. So you could get a 1915 version and have it in a little bit better shape than the 14s. 14s, a lot of them have a little caramel staining on the back of the cards. But to me, I mean, you know, America, baseball, apple pie, hot dogs, go to a baseball game, eat some Cracker Jacks. You got a Cracker Jack baseball card of Joe Jackson. And what's more American than cheating? <laughs> you know, the way that you describe it, the enthusiasm you have for it, it just, Again, it makes me want to go buy a Cracker Jack card. But so I don't own this card. I well, wish I did. You go, I know you've got the. I know you've got some cards that you could trade to go get it. You, Maybe. So the thing that I love, though, it reminds me of like when I was a kid and we had, um, you know, we had toys at the bottom of the of the cereal box, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't always wrap the toys in these like super like pristine ways where the the toy could be untouched. Sometimes the toy was just right next to the cereal. Oh, yeah. And how you describe that card next to the Cracker Jacks kind of reminds me of that. That to me, that that's like the coolest thing because of course all of them are hammered. They're not, I guarantee you, I haven't looked at the population before, but I guarantee you that the mint copies of these or anything close to mint are next to impossible to find. And I think there's something to be said for that. You know, flash forward to something that I understand maybe a little bit better, 90s inserts. Some of the greatest 90s basketball inserts are the cards that are the ones that are most often damaged and, and impossible to find in mint condition. Do you think there's anything to that? Are, are cards that are more condition sensitive often more iconic? Definitely. Definitely. Um, and, and for good reason, right? I mean, you know, I say iconic 
if we're going to talk about iconic list, you know, it's difficult to define iconic. I probably have a different definition than everybody else you're speaking to about it. Right. Um, but all of that goes into it. And the reason why it's condition sensitive also works, you know, and, and it plays into, you know, valuation. It plays into, you know, the story of the card. The fact that this was something that kids could get at a baseball game by buying or their parents buying them a box of Cracker Jacks and they could pull a baseball card out while watching a baseball game. To me, that's as iconic as it gets. And this is the guy in that set. That's the best. Hey, fantastic take. I love it, Cage. Card number 54, the 1914 Cracker Jack, Joe Jackson. Next time we will hit card number 53. That's tomorrow. And until then, happy collecting.